Hi everyone, I hope you guys are all doing good. Many of you who watch my channel are from all different generations, so it's difficult to kind of predict exactly how all of you feel as a whole when it comes to things like social media or simply the way that the world is now. For example, if you're a Zoomer, you're probably quite used to living in the start of this smart world, or otherwise you wouldn't really have much of an idea of what it would be like to live without the smart world. If you're Gen X, you probably have distant, fond memories of being out on the street until the street lights would come on. Then you'd know it's home time, but rarely would you spend a great deal of time indoors. So wherever you are at with your perspective, one question does remain, and that is, are you walking in truth, or are you simply living with an ego, living for that next dopamine fix? And really when it comes down to it, it doesn't matter what kind of technology is at our disposal, we as human beings for millennia have been faced between these two choices and it remains part of the human condition. So today I'm just going to have a really chill, gentle discussion around the social state of affairs, how we see ourselves as individuals, how we want to move forward knowing that there are these certain obstacles in our way such as these new technologies that could inhibit us from reaching the truth or in other words what grandfather white bear would say finding your way back home so grandfather white bear as i mentioned in the introduction if you don't know him or don't know our background very quickly, Grandfather White Bear is my stepfather. He came into my life about 20 years ago as a First Nations Canadian. He had brought with him the teachings of his elders. And I'm very fortunate to have been part of his spiritual and cultural practices. So every now and again, Grandfather White Bear will get these bouts of inspiration where he will draw on the teachings of his elders. And so one aspect that he shared the other day has inspired this video today, and that is where he talks about one-heartedness versus two-heartedness. You would have heard the concept of one-heartedness probably through the likes of Bob Marley. One love, one heart. Let's get together and feel alright. And really, Bob just kind of nails it on the head. But in this particular scenario, I would like to simply read a snippet of what Grandfather White Bear had expressed the other day. So he says, A one-hearted person is a person of the earth connected to the Mother Earth. Yes, that is true, but what does it look like? First and foremost, it is the goal and the responsibility of a one-hearted to bring back the harmony that humans once lived. Second, it is our responsibility to free the planet of the destructive practices of the two-hearted by doing our part to save what we can, to grow and nourish the land and space around us. Three, it is of the utmost importance that we are the truth speakers, that we speak only the full truth. Four, the next responsibility is to reconnect and nurture the balance between all of the sisters and brothers. Five, it benefits us all to not be so materialistic and for us to share with those that have less than. Six, it is most important that we learn to overcome our prejudices. Seven, it is for us to learn and understand that we are all related no matter the species. 8. We are to be kind and respectful to all animals and to take no more than what we need for the immediate. 9. Try to live more childlike, not childish, but childlike by seeing through the eyes of innocence. 10. To stand strong and unfailingly for what we hold dear and for what is right. 11. To know and understand what it means when we speak the responsibility of those not yet born for seven generations. 12. Lastly, bother no one about their religious or spiritual belief. The vast knowledge we think we may know is simply one tiny drop of rain in the great storm of life. Are you challenged yet? Did that push some buttons? It sure pushed a few of mine when I was learning from the elders. The two-hearted world does not agree. They do not want us to succeed. They want us to continue being fodder for the system, fuel for the rich. 
This aspect of one and two heartedness often comes up in conversations between Grandfather White Bear and myself. And the aspect of one and two heartedness doesn't specifically just come from what Grandfather White Bear was taught, but you can see this through so many different cultures and religious texts. You have the seven deadly sins, and the goal is, as a Christian per se, to live as closely aligned with God as possible, which means veering away from those seven deadly sins, is to recognize when we may commit those sins and realizing that those sins are within a two-hearted space. Or another way to look at it is the difference between the human ego, the two-hearted space, and the lack of ego, the one-hearted space. One way I really love looking at it as well is from the Anasazi Foundation of the Fords and the Backwards Walk, and I've talked about this so much on my channel. I am good Buffalo Eagle. Hear my words. The Creator gave all two-legged beings a sacred gift. We call this the gift of choice. Regardless of where we are born, all come to earth with this gift. Along with this gift of choice, all two-legged beings have a sense of knowing right from wrong, from the one who stands within. Therefore, the gift of choice allows us to choose knowingly. By applying the gift of choice, we can choose to walk forward or we can choose to walk backwards. The Ford's walk being walking in truth, walking without ego, walking in beauty, walking with responsibility, whereas the backwards walk is not really giving a flipping flip about anything. It's about feeding the ego, being destructive, being irresponsible, living from day to day with the intent of gaining something for the self. And that is a concept that all of us can practice no matter our spiritual or cultural beliefs. They seem to be pretty universal and self-explanatory to a very, very simple level. So our world has many two-hearted temptations. A great example would be within the realm of social media as that's what we're all on. By opening this video in particular, you have engaged within a two-hearted system. And while we, of course, have a choice as to how we go about using these technologies, the point of the matter is that if we don't use these two-hearted technologies mindfully, we could very, very easily slip in to the feeding of the ego, the backwards walk. And I definitely know for a fact that you've come by one of those videos that have just popped up on Facebook or YouTube or wherever, where it's showing a little snippet of people being completely addicted to their device. And while they are immensely immersed within this universe, they are missing everything around them. They are missing life. And that unfortunately has been thrown into our face as a new social challenge that we have to deal with. And this is absolutely unprecedented. Nowhere in human history have we had a scenario where news could pop up in Poland to then three seconds later be seen in New Zealand. And of course, these technologies are created by certain corporations who do not have our best interests at heart. For example, we as people have become the product. Mark Zuckerberg has no issues data mining we as people using these platforms. So it's in the best interest of Mark to have as many people use his platform as possible and furthermore to immerse themselves more into the metaverse. This idea of a metaverse absolutely engages within that two-hearted way of being. And this in particular scares me so much because I have noticed how people use social media. They do use it in a two-hearted way. They use it unmindfully. It reminds me of the matrix of Ready Player One, of Black Mirror, predictive programming if you will. But anywho, this acts as a reminder as to how we want to go about living our lives, how we want to go about using social media. In this postmodern era, people have no intention of finding their way back home, of following truth that they would rather engage with the two-hearted way of being because it feels good, because it gives them instant gratification, because it gives them validation. As a result of these things, people have become so much more narcissistic and simultaneously 
seeking further validation. People who don't know themselves, who have no interest in finding themselves based on them simply taking responsibility for their lives and finding meaning in their life, where instead they log onto social media and immerse themselves in this secondary reality into this virtual reality where they can be whoever they want to be, where they can be validated by anybody. These people box themselves into these different categories where they continue to seek certain validation. And this further perpetuates the fact that they don't know themselves and they have no interest in knowing themselves. This world is temporarily easier to be a part of because you get instant gratification. And this really is the bigger issue because finding your way back home finding the truth, constantly working on self-improvement is a journey. This is something that you'll be working on for the rest of your life and it is challenging. Finding your way back home is about learning things. It's about facing challenges. It's about challenging the ego, taking you down a few notches. And being in that space is very, very uncomfortable. But that is the space where we do the most growing. However, immersing oneself into the metaverse There is none of that. There is no growth. There is simply instant gratification constantly. And I'm seeing this aspect play out in the real world, or rather, many people are trying to implement what they see in virtual reality into the real world. I believe this has added to the political conflicts that we are seeing, to this breakdown in our culture that we are seeing. Not only are people becoming far more self-entitled, than what we would have seen 20 plus years ago. But they also seem to do their best to impose themselves onto others. Because they receive so much validation online, they believe that if they impose themselves, impose their will in real life, that they'll gain the same results. Unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. And we seem to be seeing these big cultural conflicts. And I do believe a lot of it has to do with being online. A lot of it has to do with falling victim to a too-hearted way of being. And as Beer had stated, the elites, the 1% don't want us to succeed. They don't want us to live in a one-hearted way of being. They don't want us to take responsibility. They don't want us to find our way back home. They don't want us to walk within beauty. And so they use these tools at their disposal to show people that actually the two-hearted way of being is much more comfortable. It gives you instant gratification. It gives you instant validation. It's easier. But easier doesn't mean that it's right. Being uncomfortable is where we grow. So anyway, you guys, I want to know your thoughts on the state of the world. What do you think about this concept of one and two heartedness or this concept of being with an ego, with an instant gratification, with an wanting to take, take, take versus taking responsibility, being without ego, connecting with real life people rather than ideas and things. Whether you see it from a spiritual, cultural or religious standpoint or where you see it because It works for you simply because it works for you. Let me know. I'd love to get beer on here, as I said a few videos ago. It's just a little bit difficult pinning time with him because my parents live about 45 minutes away. It is great having them living in Auckland now, but still it is a little bit hard when the weekend comes about and we're all so busy. But he has a breadth of knowledge. There is so much that his elders had taught to him that I would love to give Bear an opportunity to be able to express those teachings. It is so very important from what Bear has told me that those teachings are not lost. And unfortunately, being in this postmodern world is difficult to simply just grab a whole bunch of people who are willing to continue those teachings where sometimes it makes a difference when you put yourself out online ironically enough where you might just touch somebody's heart where something that you might say will resonate with somebody this is a team effort for all of us no matter our race religion or creed We are here together as one people to spread these messages of one heart. A Bob, Uncle Bob. (laughs) Anyway, you guys, I hope you have a good day, night, morning, evening, wherever you are in the world. And I'll see you guys all again for the next video. Bye.